Today I want to talk about a sacrifice that only happened one time. Yeah. Didn't need to happen but one time. Yeah. Once and for all. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now tomorrow some of you may celebrate by uh, eating ribs and so forth and hamburgers and all that stuff. But remember this. The reason you're going to be able to do that and not have to worry about anything is because what one man died on the cross. Amen. 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 So let's talk about a few things first. But first we want to pray. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just want to thank you today, Lord. We want to thank you that you woke us up this morning. We want to thank you, Lord, for what you've done on Calvary, Lord, what you did on Calvary for us, Lord, that we could have eternal life, Lord. Lord, let me preach today the word of God, and let me sit down and you stand up, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and we all say amen. 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 Uh, let me just read something that I wrote out. I'm going to read something I'm going to preach from God's word. So have your Bible ready, because we're going to go and preach up today the uh, uh, Gospel of John, and we're going to go into uh, Ephesians, and we're going to talk from the book of Hebrews. Amen. amen. All right. Uh, the great Jesus, the greatest sacrifice of all. That's the title of my uh, sermon today. Tomorrow we celebrate Memorial Day, and it's a national holiday uh, instituted by Congress to remember the fallen and survivor servicemen that have fought in our country or for our country in wars and foreign conflicts throughout the ages. Uh, the day is set aside to celebrate our freedom from tyranny and from terror. In other words, we had the 9-11 event, and then we declared war. And uh, the war is still going on, amen? amen. And, and the war is still going on in the spiritual realm, too. Amen. Satan is still busy. Yeah. He, he, just, he just started. He just started good. But, but remember this. He has no power amen. for what Jesus did on the cross. So that's another reason we need to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, death, and resurrection, okay? All right. Uh, now, so having said that, we'll say in this, the, the occasion that we should remember is Memorial Day is okay to give uh, honor to our servicemen, but we have to remember that Jesus, Jesus died for our sins. That's right. Died for our sins. And also, that, that was a sacrifice that he made over 2,000 years ago. What? On a lonely Friday afternoon at a place called Valgotha, also known to us as Calvary. Amen? Amen. Now, at that time, Jesus was tortured and was abused for three hours until he uttered these last words, it is finished. Now, why is this important to us? Because this tells us and shows us that we have a Savior. We have a Savior, not only that we can celebrate, but we can acknowledge it. And that we know that he has died for our sins alone. No one else but he could have done that. Uh, why is this sacrifice so different from what our brothers and sisters who have died in the battle for our country? First place, Jesus was God himself. Amen? Amen. He was God himself who gave himself as a human sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Now, even, even if you don't believe in Jesus, he still died for you. Yeah. He still died for, for the Muslim. He died for everybody. The criminal, the guys on death row, he died for everybody. He didn't say, I'm just going to die for certain people. He didn't say, I'm going to die for even the people that believe in me. He gave his life as a ransom for everybody. Amen. Yeah. And he left the decision up to us whether we decide to accept that, yeah. to accept his death as a ransom for our sins. Because you had to remember before Jesus died, uh, the, the way that uh, the sacrifice that was made was through goats and, and lambs yeah, and, right. and animals and all that, he was sacrificed to God. But yeah. the, that, that didn't work. That didn't work because if it did work, then God wouldn't have to send Jesus down, would he? All right. He wouldn't all have right. had to send Jesus, so it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So he said, look, I'm, I'm going to send a, sac a human sacrifice yes. in the form of me taking the place on the cross. This is what God said, because Amen. some people will, will say, well, how can God as the Father and God the Son be the same? 
but the Holy Spirit too. Well, it is because of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus uh, was chosen to pay the price. Uh, Romans 8, 3, 23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody is in need of a Savior. There is no one on this earth that can say, I don't need a Savior. There's no one on earth that can say that Jesus did die for, for me because he did. Amen? Amen. So that's what we have to understand. <laughs> you see, the most important question that anyone will ever ask you is what? Where will you spend eternity? Now, I've been on this earth for 84 years, going on 85. All right. And that's good. But that don't mean nothing. Because this is not my home. This is just a temporary. Look, I can remember like yesterday when I started school. All right. I can't say I can remember the day I was born. <laughs> I don't remember that. But I remember when I was about three or four years old. Amen. And, and I can remember a lot of incidents in between, all right? All right. But but the question is, where am I going to spend eternity? Because I'm not going to be here forever. And I know that. And you know it too. Amen. Everybody knows. I don't know when your time is up. I don't know when my time is up. And I know one thing. I'm going to make the most of my time while I live. While I live. Amen. And the most of my time is going to be telling people how to find Jesus. Yeah. and how to serve him. Yeah. And the other thing would be the where, where will you spend eternity? Because, it, look, it, it, this time on earth is short. Yeah. But when you spend eternity someplace, that's forever. Yeah. That's forever. You can't even die in hell. That's when you can't die in hell. And I don't want to die in hell. You know, the physical death that we do here on earth is what would, would take us to heaven. Yeah. See, some people say, well, well, um, well I don't I'm, I want to go to heaven, but you got to die before you go to heaven. How are you going to get to heaven unless you die? So you, you, you have to die. But that's the physical death. So the eternal death is what God provided for us in the Son, Jesus, okay? Uh, now let's look at some scriptures that will tell us about what God intended for us to do in the first place, what he, the foundation of the earth. We, let's turn to, uh, well, let's, let's, I'm, I'm sorry, let's, let's go back to, uh, to John. Let me go back to John, the first chapter of John, the uh, third chapter, verse 316. What, what does that mean by verse 316 when it says, God gave his only son that, that uh, he gave his life for us? What does that mean? That means this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, God had to love us first. We didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve his love. We, in fact, we were in our worst most sinful state when he decided to send his son Jesus uh, to die for us. Because, you know, when, when, see, when God created us, he put us in the garden, right? right and in the garden, we had everything. We were supposed to live before he, eternity in the garden. Yeah. But that didn't work out because the enemy yeah. came into the garden yeah. where he's still coming today. He still hasn't changed his tactics, same as the word then. And, and so... Uh, Eve, of course, was beguiled by what the, what the devil had said, but, but that's okay. Uh, God says that Adam was the one that the cause of sin. Why did Adam cause the sin? Because Adam was the man that was responsible. He put him in charge, not the woman. He put the man in charge of the garden, and he didn't do what he was supposed to do. All right. Amen? Amen? So therefore, the devil got the victory at that time. But when Jesus died on the cross, that's when the devil was defeated, amen? amen? Yeah, he was defeated then. So, see, God loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that who believe in him. Now, that, remember this, that who believeth in him. Yeah. If you don't believe in Jesus, mm -hmm. you don't believe that he died for your sins, then it's not going to do any good, is it? No. No. So, he no. sent his son, and verse 17 says, for God sent his son to the world to condemn the world that the world through him might be saved. Yeah. What we're saying here is God loved you so much that he wanted you to be saved. He didn't want you to perish. Because yeah. the word says that God desired what? That no soul should perish, right? Yeah. God doesn't want any soul to perish. In fact, a lot of people say, well, when is Jesus coming back? Well, Jesus is not coming back until everybody has had a chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ right. and right. know that they can be saved. Amen? Right. Yeah. No. No, in, in their hearts that they can be saved and that they don't have to spend eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants. And verse 18 says, He that believes on him is not condemned, 
but he that believeth not on him is condemned already. That means that if you don't believe in Jesus, you're already condemned. Yes. Uh, God, is, God will not send you to hell. How do you get to hell? That's the choice. You, 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 you send yourself to hell. God is not going to send you to hell. Because he desires that no one should perish. So why would, why would God contradict himself? God can't not contradict himself. Uh, and then in verse 19 he said, And this the condemnation that light is coming to the world and the men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Well, when Satan came into the garden, that's what happened. Darkness came into the world, right? Because we were not doing what God wanted us to do. And when you disobey God, then you're in darkness. Now, how do you come out of darkness? You come out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Now, you can't come out of darkness by yourself. You can't come out of darkness by yourself because it's not impossible. Because the world, you see, here's what the Bible says about that. If you're in the world, you think like the world. That's what the Bible says. We are in the world, but not of the world. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We're not of the world. We are in the world, but we're not. I mean, I'm, I'm in the world right now. Amen. I mean, I see a lot of stuff going around. I mean, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you got drugs, you got pornography, you got all yeah. kinds of I mean, you got people killing a guy yesterday uh, in California. got out there and, yeah. and talked about it. He was... Uh, I don't know why the women don't love me because I'm a handsome guy and this and that. And then they got a gun and start shooting people. I mean, you know, it's crazy. And every week something like that's happening because they are will living in darkness. And you know, what, what are you talking about? Women don't love them. God loves you. What else do you need? What do you need? I, uh, I, don't, I, mean, I mean, I'm glad somebody loves me, but I know one thing. God loved me because he died on the cross of me. And, I, and I'm saved. And I'm going to be in heaven with him and all my brothers. I, I don't need nothing else. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we all need companionship. We need this and we need that. But if we have God's love, then we got everything we need. And, and God's love is expressed by what he did on the cross. And it goes on to say uh, in the last verse that I talked about in my scripture reading was that, but he that does truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So he, God is going to judge you for everything you've done and everything that you haven't done either. And what, what he calls on the church now to serve him, not just by coming to church, we're going to talk about that in Hebrews, that, but he, he desires that we know who he is and by knowing who he is, we want to do his will. Amen? Amen. And his will is to bring other people to Christ. Amen? Amen. That's, that's what it's about. It's about bringing someone else to Christ. Yes. Because just because I get saved, just because I know I'm going to heaven, I don't want, I'm not going to be in heaven by myself. And, and if I really love Christ and I really want to do his, his will, I, I want to bring other people there too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right. And so it's my duty as a minister to tell other people about Christ. And to tell them what he's done for me. Yeah. And what he's done for me, he'll do for you. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, I ain't no favorite son of God. His favorite son was Jesus Christ who died. But, but he was his only son. Now we are children of the, of the most high. Yes, we are. And that's why he that's why he sent his son to die for us, right? Amen. So Amen. but but he didn't have to die but one time, and he did. Now let's let's go to Ephesians. Let's talk a little bit about what God meant for us for the, for the foundations of the earth. Uh, in, in, in Ephesians 1, verse uh, 4, he says, Accordingly, he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. What does that mean? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God chose us before our mothers and fathers ever even knew each other. God already knew that we were going to be born, right? And, and he knew that was going to happen. And he already chose us, it says, before the foundation of the world. And to, but he chose us to be holy and what? And without blame before him in love. Now that ain't happening though. So that's why Jesus had to die on the cross. Amen. That's what we call that the greatest sacrifice. He's, and he says here in verse 5, have predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good place of the will. So we are children of the Most High, amen? Amen. Yeah. In fact, the Bible says that we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Yeah. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, amen? Amen. Yeah. So when you when your kids say, well, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, that's not true. 
And you can tell right in the Bible that he says, if you are joined in with Jesus Christ. And in, in verse 6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, where he made us acceptable in the midst in the beloved. Amen. God, through his grace, made us acceptable. Amen. 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 All right. Through yes. his grace. It, it's nothing we did. No. We couldn't do anything. No. I mean, we are, we are sinners from the very get-go. Because of what Adam did, right? right? And St. Eve now. Don't blame me for anything. <laughs> he was just there. Adam, I don't know what he was doing when, when the devil was talking to Eve. But you don't blame, you can't blame the woman, you blame the man. And that's what God blamed. But he said, to what sin came through one man and to another man, we have grace and mercy. Amen. And that man is Jesus Christ, the Savior, right? Right. Yeah. right. Now, Adam had to pay for it. God told me he had to go get a job. <laughs> some of them ain't figured that out yet. Some guys ain't figured that out. He's a God said, so you got to go get a job, right? And he told a woman she, when she had a baby, she was, it was going to hurt a little bit. Yes. Amen. <laughs> but that ain't nothing that happened. I ain't, ain't stopping from having a baby. But I don't know some of these young girls. I don't know. Boy, I'm going to One time, Teacher Jake said, Lord, if I had to have a baby, he said, if a man had to have a baby, there wouldn't be nobody. <laughs> Population would be zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. So this is it. Praise God. Now let's go to Ephesians 2 and read what he says here. He says, In the in a, you are quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Meaning that from the very get go, we were in sin. Not, not when God put us in the garden, but after uh, uh, what Satan did and uh, allowed, or uh, Eve allowed Satan to do. All right. Where in time past, he says, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, that's a big one. What are we doing now with these cell phones and uh, all this stuff? That's, uh, all the, in the air. Everything is in the air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they don't have to rob a bank anymore. Right. They can just go on the computer and take the money out the bank. You don't even know who took it out when it's gone. Yeah. Oh, boy. And he says he's a spirit, of, he's a prince of the air. Yeah. That's the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have, uh, I know even in prison, when we talk about the, uh, when we get to the choir, see, the, he was the director of the music in, in oh, heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before God kicked him out, he had pride. See, that's two things that God hates more than anything else is sin and pride, I think. All right? Mm -hmm. So the devil was there. But as he says right here, now, now they're working in the children of this beauty. So for the devil to work in you, you've got to allow him to work in you. That's right. You've got to allow the devil to use you. He can't right. use you against the will. You've got the Holy Spirit. See, we have God in us. The Holy Spirit it dwells right. in us and is with us. And he can help us to escape anything that the devil throws at us. Amen. If you allow the Holy Spirit to work, to do what his job is to do. But see, most of the time, we, can't, we don't let the Holy Spirit do what it's supposed to do. We take over. That's right. And in our power, we can't resist the devil. Right. Why? Because we're encased in the flesh. That's right. The flesh and the world and the devil are the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Your flesh can't do anything. Because it wants to have what it wants to have. All right. It wants yeah. to do what it wants to do. That's, right. That's the flesh. Right. So you got to tell the flesh, look, I, you, uh -uh. you can't do that no more. Mm -hmm. now you done did that enough. We got to be in enough trouble. I thank Jesus that I'm, I'm alive today and I know the Holy Spirit is going to take me where I need to go. All right. and that's why you got to call on the Holy that's Spirit, right. see, which is God. Because he, he, when Jesus died, he said, I'm going to send you a helper. Yes. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, he can, and he can do all things. Because remember in Philippians 4.13, it says what? I can do all oh, things through Christ that strengthens me. Okay, Christ is not here anymore. He's sitting on the right hand of God, but the Holy Spirit is right here within you. Yes. And you just call on the Holy Spirit. Say, Look, Lord, I need some help now. Right. I ain't, this ain't working. Amen. And the devil get the best of me, and he can. Because okay. the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? Okay. And, and you don't know, and, when, and the devil is, is, is throwing on it. And not, it's not bad, it don't look bad. It don't taste bad, like you go out and go get all them ribs tomorrow and all that. <laughs> all that, that tastes good, though. You, you want to eat them. And that means, well, it ain't good for you, though. But always, what's good to you ain't always good for you. Amen. Remember that. That's a saying I've done a long time ago. What's good to you ain't always good for you. And what's good for you ain't always good to you. 
Uh -huh. It appeared to be good, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what you go by. But see, God is saying, no, forget all that. I'm, for whatever reason that you messed up, I'm going to save you anyway. Amen. My Amen. grace is sufficient. That's what he told Paul. Paul was, was, uh, was, was telling about he had this and he had this problem and, 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 and couldn't walk. They don't even know what the problem was. He told God to take it away. And, he's, and, and he asked him two or three times. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. And that's right. And God Amen. and so it is. As we get older, we're going to have these pains and so forth and so on. But that's okay. God's grace is sufficient. And the main thing is that God already died for you. And so you have eternal life, right? And the last, verse, the last part of that verse, it said, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before day that we should walk in them. Good. What are the good works? Good works is doing something for somebody else besides yourself. See, that's the key thing I tell people all the time. You got to die to yourself. Amen. You got to die to yourself. Because if it's just about you, then you ain't caring about nobody else. You're just thinking about yourself. Amen. And Jesus himself said, I came to what? Serve and not to be served. Amen. Jesus said, God himself, the king of the universe, walking on earth, said, I came to serve. Washed his disciples' feet, right? Yes. He wasn't looking for anything in return. And the only, the only thing that we thank God, we, we look at Matthew 25, 31. And he, has, he gives us four things that he asks us to do. When did you visit those in prison? That's one of them right there. Mm -hmm. uh, when, did you, when did you give some uh, food to the hungry? When did you give some water to the thirsty, right? Yeah. When did you take somebody in that was a stranger? Yeah, that's what he'll ask you. Then he said, well, if you did, if you did it, if you did it to one of these, to the least of these, he said, you did it unto me, right? Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. And he said, he's going to call it and he's going to ask you that question. You got to be able to answer. You can't say, "Well, I went to church every Sunday. Uh, I prayed. I prayed every night." No, that, that's I mean, anybody can do that. But I mean, it's not saying you shouldn't do it. But what I'm saying is, God wants some concrete uh, example of what you did to help somebody know that Jesus Christ exists. I mean, I read about those children, those little girls over there in uh, Nigeria, uh, 300 girls that was captured and all that stuff because they were going to school. And I pray every night for those girls that they will be found. I'm praying because these are something that I, I feel that. I feel uh, if I had a daughter and somebody that was captured and I told them they're going to sell her for slavery and all that. And I, you know, I'm praying for these people. It's not, it's not happening to me, but if it happens to my brothers and sisters anywhere in the world, then I have to be accountable for it. Because God is saying to me that everybody in the whole world, whether they know me or not, I love him. Yeah, yeah. I love the man on death row. I love the guy. I love the, the guy. I even love the rapist. He said, "I don't know how he could," but he said he does. <laughs> I'm not God. I, I can't put myself in his place and say, "Well, I don't love. I love this person. I don't love that person because that's of what right. they did." I got to look. I got to pray for that person, yeah, yeah, yeah. the person that's committed that sin, even that brother mm -hmm. that uh, pleaded, right. found the guilty of raping uh, Mrs. Pontius' uh, daughter uh, when she was 14 years old. Yeah. Uh, the brother and I, he confessed, and uh, you know, some people said he couldn't forgive it. But see, God forgave us when I was in need, when I was worst state, right? Amen. God forgave us. And we have to be uh, forgiven too, no matter what, no matter if it doesn't. Uh, we don't like to, may not like to forgive the person. In fact, God didn't ask us to like anybody. He said, love. That's right. Right. I don't have to like my neighbor because he don't right. take the trash and all that. I don't have to like it, but I got to love him, right? I got to love, I got to love you because you're God's children just like I am. So God loved me. If he loved me, then he loved you. There's no difference. There's no difference. So God, God says that we have to be obedient and love just like, and forgive like he has forgiven, right? Amen. Uh, let's look at the, let's look, look at the Hebrews. I want to go to the Hebrews and we're going to wrap this up. Okay, now Hebrews says this, Hebrews 10, turn to me to Hebrews 10, 20, 24. And he says, and the verse says this, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. Mm -hmm. Amen. To, look, to provoke unto love. Didn't, didn't say to provoke to, to hating somebody. It says provoke unto love. Because that's what God is about. God is love. 
If God is love, then we are supposed to be as we are in. He said, I am holy, be holy like I'm holy. He said, be, I'm, in, uh, I'm love, I, that's what God stands for. He stands for love. Nothing else. Doesn't stand for hate. He doesn't stand for uh, confusion. He stands for love. Yes. And so we are to love each other as he loves us. Amen. Yes. That's in 1 John. If God loves us, we are to love each other. And then he goes on to say in verse 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting one another so much the more as you see that they approach it. What he's saying there is this, the day is approaching. And the, and the evil is going to, you read, 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 read what 2 Timothy, what's it, 2 Timothy 3? Mm -hmm. What it says about how, how much more evil is going to become as we go, as the day approaches. Mm -hmm. And the day of uh, uh, approach is talking about when Jesus is coming back, right? Amen. Now, the devil knows that too. So he's turning up the heat right now. That's right. He's turning it up. He's after your kids, he's after whoever. Yeah. Tell you that drugs, uh, uh, drugs is on a ramper, they ain't getting better, it's getting worse. Uh, heroin is supposed to be around. I mean, all this stuff the devil is using to what? Attract our young kids. Oh, well, anybody that will fall for it, that's what the devil's trying to do. He turned to heat because he knows that his place is perfect. The devil, the fire's already been prepared for him. But not for us. Hell is not created for us. It was created for the devil and the fallen angels, right? Am I right, Brother Moore? Right. Now, what I'm saying to you is this. It wasn't prepared for us, so if, if we get there, if we go there, it's because we put ourselves there. God didn't put us there. Because God ain't trying to get it. God wants us up there with him. I don't know why he wants us all there with him, but he does. I, I ain't answering that question. I'm just glad he said you can come up here with me. You ain't got to stay down there no more on earth and all that crap. And you ain't got to, that's, I mean, that's good. That's, that's, I'm looking forward to that. Whenever he takes me, I'm looking forward to being up there with my mother and whoever. And I know some good people here and some people that I think don't there ain't going to be up there. Yeah, everybody in heaven ain't going to be in heaven that you think don't be in heaven. And, and, uh, so that's the way it's going to work. We don't know that. Only God God knows that. But you you have the right to, to choose where you want to be. You have a right to make that choice, right? Amen. You don't, you don't have to take it. So God don't say, well, you go to hell, you're going to put yourself in hell. That's what, that's what happened. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Hebrews 13, and we will close this up here. Now, that's one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible, Hebrews 13. Because they have a lot of good words in there. And he says in uh, verse 13, one says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. That's right. We don't know who. Jesus would have walked in that back door any day. I don't know. Oh, I know he's coming back to him, but he, he, he can still come down. He can, he can do anything he wants to do. You know, God can do anything he wants to do. You don't tell God what he can't do. Because he says that. Uh, so, but we don't know. So therefore, even strangers, you've got to treat them right. Because God is saying, how think a stranger could be an angel. We have angels. But and if you don't embrace that person, then God is not pleased. Because God doesn't tell us to pick and choose. So he says, remember them, them that are in bonds, and bond with the, and bond with them, for they which suffer adversity as being your suffering body. That means that people that have problems, we got to understand and you got to pray for them, right? Yes. That's all he asks us to do. I, I don't have to give them a lot of money. I don't have any money. I can't, I can't give you what I don't have, but I but I gotta pray for you. Yes. Yes. And I gotta tell you that God loves you. And I love you too. And then he says in here, let your conversation be without covetous and be content with such things as you have. Be content with such things as you have. God didn't expect you to have look, material things of good that satisfy for a minute, and that's all. Because you can't take anything with you. Amen. So you, you don't build, don't try to build material things here on earth. Because there's nothing you can do with them. The thieves will break through and steal them and uh, whatever. And so therefore, he says, set up treasures in heaven. <coughs> and where your treasure is, is where your heart is. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. All right. Amen. Well, I know I, I can't uh, you know, do nothing with all this stuff. You don't know if I got to leave behind one day. All right. Uh, this uh, uh, is verse 18.
repeats this, what Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus Christ doesn't change. Yeah. He hasn't changed. God doesn't change. Thank goodness. Thank goodness God ain't like me. He ain't like me. He stays the same yesterday. That's why they talk about the Bible. I mean, first place, the Bible, well, the Bible was this way later, back in the day. No, it wasn't back in the day. Back in the day, it's the same as now. It ain't changed. Because God doesn't change. Thank goodness, God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So I can count on him. I can count on him. There's one person I can count on. Yes. I may not sometimes you can't even count on your own self. You don't even, you don't even your own self. You don't know how I many get the day and do this and get the morning and do something. But I can count on God. Yeah. Amen. And I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So I'm in good shape. I'm in good shape. All right, we need uh, one more verse here. We're going to wrap this up. All right. So this says, uh, also it says here, and I'm going to say this, pray, he says, pray in, in Hebrews 13. Uh, the last part of it, uh, what do you mean? oh yeah, I know, this is what I wanted to tell you. Uh, he says here, that I will never leave you or forsake you. Now that's very important, because when Jesus says that in, in, the, in Hebrew, God says, I will never leave you or forsake you, means that you can count on him to the end. No matter what your circumstances are, what you're going through right now, you can count on God. Because he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, and God cannot lie. That means whatever he told you, he promised you, he's going to do it. And you can count on it. It's like money in the bank. Again, is it there? It's there. Because he said it. Amen? He said it. And uh, the last part of this, and we're going to close. It says, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience all things will be honest. Now, the God of peace that brought us again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom we glory and ever and ever. And amen. amen. So what I've told you today was this. The greatest sacrifice of all is Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is our Savior. That's why we call him Savior. That's why we call him Master. Because he, he controls our life. He controls where we're going to spend eternity. That's the most important thing. It, it's not, again, what you, where you're living now, how you're living now, because uh, this is not important. This is only momentary. This is not our, this is not our home. This is not our home here on earth. Our home is not here. We are aliens down here. We got green cards. By the grace of God, we're just here. So live your life like God wants you to live it. Yeah. By helping yeah. each other and praying for each other. Amen. And in this church we have a big challenge because we're, we have a, we're going to be interviewing a new pastor, I think Wednesday night. We're going to, some of us are going to interview a guy, somebody that they may have told, I don't know, they haven't told anybody yet. But we got to pray for whoever comes in here that he's going to bring God's grace in here, God's mercy and love. Yeah. That's right. And, and we got to do the rest, but the work is still up to us. It's not, it's not to one minute. We don't have no Savior coming in here. The Savior's already come. That's Jesus, amen. So what we're looking for is somebody to guide us, somebody to pray for us, and somebody to lead us, amen.